any new engine will inevitably demand some new procedures to be followed in the workshop for both routine service and any necessary repair. In the next three sections of this program, we'll deal with how to dismantle and assemble the unit for repair, take a look at the fuel, ignition and engine management systems, and cover some routine service and diagnostic points. Some dismantling of this new V6 can be done easily enough with the engine still in the car. Items such as the air plenum chamber, the fuel injection system, but it's considerably easier to work on the rest of the engine while it's mounted in a stand. Just a small example of this is the routing of the water hose between the thermostat and the water pump. It's located in a passage between the left-hand cylinder head and the block. It's secured by jubilee clips at either end, and were the engine in a car, it would be awkward to remove. While it's not suggested that an engine be removed merely to replace this hose, the engine's tight fit under the bonnet of the Scorpio will make major repair work, if it's necessary, much easier to handle in a stand. You'll find that the thermostat housing is a new design. An unusual feature is the connection to the left-hand cylinder head, which is by means of a small spacer tube fitted with O-rings. The connection to the right-hand head is more conventional. You'll find nothing new in removing other ancillaries from the engine, items such as the exhaust manifolds, the heat shields, the oil dipstick and tube, and both oil return pipes running between the heads and the oil pan. If you're working towards the removal of the cylinder heads, you'll need to take off the small covers to the two chain guide bolts and also the lifting eye on the left-hand cylinder head. This eye must be removed before taking off the cylinder head cover on the left-hand head. If you don't, the cover will snag. Something a bit unusual with the cover gaskets is that they're integral with the cover. Therefore, if one is damaged in some way, the complete cover has to be replaced. To avoid damaging them, make sure a cover you've removed is placed on the bench with the gaskets facing up. If you're going to disturb the camshaft positions, perhaps to replace the timing chain or to remove one or both cylinder heads, then once the spark plugs are right, Set the engine to top dead centre using the mark on the crankshaft damper. You can double check this by the marks on the camshaft locking discs that should line up with the leading surfaces of the heads. The top chain guides on each head are simply held in place by a single bolt. Once these are off, you'll need to release the chain tensioner located at the front of the right-hand side of the right-hand cylinder head. This is done with an Allen key, turning the set screw clockwise. After which, the tensioner can be removed. Removing the camshaft sprockets requires some patience, make no mistake about it, particularly the one you should start with, notably the right-hand sprocket on the right-hand cylinder head. The job does get progressively easier. The first stage is to loosen both sprocket bolts. Then set each camshaft to a relaxed position. And you'll find this procedure is detailed in your workshop literature.
The bolt to the right-hand sprocket can then be removed, together with its washer, and then the locking disc. And be careful, none of these drop down into the chain chamber as you remove them. Before attempting to remove the sprocket itself, set the camshaft back by tapping it lightly. This will give you just enough clearance to release the sprocket from the camshaft and then work it free from the chain. It is a slightly difficult operation, so be patient. It certainly won't come free if you try to force it. Once it's removed, mark the sprocket clearly and keep it together with the washer, locking plate and bolt. And once this first one is removed, the others are easy enough because of the slack in the chain. But an important point to remember, you must maintain tension on the chain while the sprockets are being removed and once they are removed. The reason for this is to make sure the chain doesn't disengage from the crankshaft. It could be difficult to relocate it without removing the sump. Removal of the camshafts themselves is much the same as for any other engine. A point to note is that the bearing caps are marked. Numbers are used on the set on the right-hand cylinder head. Letters are used on the left, and your workshop literature details their precise positions. Even so, it's sensible to store the components in their correct order.